Hello, this is Zombie Paper, and uh, uh, this is going to be part six of the uh, research into Stoicism, or uh, my fifth part. Um, we'll do a quick recap of what's going on. Uh, we also have the uh, the empty notes because uh, this purple part is what we will be learning today or figuring out. Um, so we began by way of oh yes and uh, there is a I did some adjustments to the overlay um, this all over here um, so feeling pretty good about this now um, the quotes before were from Itty so uh, no nothing nothing bad about them I just I wanted to go ahead and get a direct quote from Seneca so I went with uh, uh, on the shortness of life, and that was like the the key quotes that I think of when I think of Stoicism. Uh, they are um, going to reach out to me to see what they think of all this, and if they like it, then we're good. If not, then I'll adjust it. Um, but all that being said, we've gone through many, many uh, topics already, so um, it's good for digging in deep. But this is where like these introductions are good for uh, walking us through the basics of, of what we covered. So in part one, we looked at the history of Stoicism. And what ended up happening is we found out that uh, we as in, uh, me as in the amateur philosopher uh, student, the, the filthy casual that knows next to nothing about all of this, that just goes in and just uh, reads what is on Wikipedia. So I, and then uh, you perhaps ranging from a uh, equal person that is uh, learning for the first time, or you are a philosopher master that um, has, for some reason, um, popped in over here. Um, either, either and all in between, welcome. Uh, so with that uh, note as well, uh, I'm not good at pronouncing Greek words. Uh, Latin based words are maybe a little bit easier but uh, I try uh, and I do not pronounce the the um, the translation that is given for Greek words typically I try to use the the original language when possible so um, as I've been learning about cynicism which is the foundation for stoicism uh, I've heard a lot of people say this person's name, and they'll use, they'll say it as uh, Diogenes, and uh, I've been trying to avoid that, so I say uh, Diogenes, Diogenes, some form of that. Um, I don't get it right. I don't really read Greek too well. Um, I try, but I fail, so. There's your content warning about uh, linguistics uh, and uh, learningness. Um, so yeah, so we have we have all of these. <clears throat> we we learned a lot about stoicism and cynicism. We learned about some of the major figures in stoicism. Um, Diogenes is definitely the one that uh, I think most. Oh, I have to cough here. Uh, my throat's been kind of acting up today, and uh, I don't have a way to edit to these, so you get to you get to see that uh, uh, I just do this one take live kind of a thing. So that's I guess another uh, context warning, maybe not content warning, but yeah, context warning. Um, I am not a genius. Uh, I am not a genius about philosophy nor Greek, and I don't edit these, so. Uh, short of uh, censoring out ads or anything like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I do this primarily to educate myself and maybe help others out. Um, so I have fun doing this, but uh, uh, maybe you don't care. But uh, if you don't care, then uh, uh, why are you here? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, part three, which I will be recording in my tomorrow and your a few days ago, 
uh, will be with Idy. Uh, that's where the it, what we'll do is uh, they will be playing Celeste. I will be um, you know being moderator for my channel for their channel uh, by way of like moderating the discussion, not being a moderator. Uh, unless the comments are outrageous and then they'll take care of their, their side i'll take care of my side and um we'll just have a chat it'll be equivalent to like sitting um playing a game uh, there won't be music going so i should probably make a note here um you know we're doing this live we might as well do the rest of this live here while i think about it uh so we have uh, let's go like this. We'll do copy and duplicate. Ooh, that went down there. So uh, let's go bring this down a little bit. Um, and I think I think just a little bit of a, a bit down here might work. Uh, we'll probably edit it live. Um, that would be my tomorrow. Yeah. So um, music from Celeste is not being recorded for DMCA uh, reasons is politely there we go and what I'd like to do is I'd like to see I might just leave it there um, I know you're probably like I'm here for the philosophy why are you doing this well I was doing hours of this today, so you get uh, you get a little bit of the behind the scenes, and also this is a good way to show stoicism in action. Where if you can control it, do control it, do work on it. But if you cannot, then it, don't let it bother you so much. So in this situation, I can control this. So why not give it a little bit of a control? Um, let's see, um, I'll just leave it like that, um, I feel like one more bit, because I don't really think C, cease and desist really applies for, um, for potential DMCA reasons. And then from there, I'll do one little bit here. Yeah, there we go. Um, but then that is optional for today. And then watch, I forget for tomorrow. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, what we did next in my part three, your part four, is we covered figures in Stoicism. Uh, we covered all these folks, and then in part, your part five, my part four, uh, I covered, we covered early figures in Stoicism. Um, the way I kind of look at this <clears throat> is I dug in from the top, and then I went through, so part parts one, two, and your four, this one right here covers like here's here's everything that kind of makes sense and then starting to dig into the major figures um the reason why um well let me let me rephrase this that's getting a little confusing so um in order to pierce through a topic like this where the wikipedia article is poorly written and confusing uh, I looked at another website that was uh, not Wikipedia that was clearer. So it wasn't just me being a big old dum dum, which is also the case, but um, the idea being that with um, digging into philosophy, you kind of have to pierce through it in multiple perspectives. You can't just go in and read one page and call yourself good. And in fact, this is something I've been learning about as I've been digging in deeper. So, you know, we, we go, we go start with really casual stuff. We dig in deeper. We find out about these philosophers and knowing their background helps inform us, the readers and understanders of why people act the way they do. Um, case in point with uh, 
Diogenes, the cynic, that were it not for his background of being exiled from Sinope, uh, now in uh, Turkey, I believe it is, uh, 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 we wouldn't have cynicism or cynicism. We wouldn't have stoicism because when, in my opinion, when he was exiled, when he was removed from his his life and forced away, uh, that was a stripping away of everything, all luxuries, all essentials. And he was able to move to, I believe it was Athens. I, I forget the exact, uh, let's, let's take a quick look here since we're talking about since we're talking about uh, Diogenes there, we might as well bring that up here. So that he was, he was from Sinope or Sinope. And then he went to Corinth. Uh, I, once again, I'm challenged frequently by the Greek language, so so that would be Cor, Corinth, Corinthos. Yeah, Corinthos or Corinth. <laughs> I look over here rather than over here, huh? So yeah, going from being exiled out of one city and then moving somewhere else, it was a deep psychological, if you will, trauma that he used positively and he used that to develop a whole school of thought that I I believe is based around the notion of self-reliance by not having a sort of uh, external need for validation um, he could do what he felt like he needed to do so he lived in a jar and I think that's great I think that's I think that maybe maybe we need more people that uh, I was just kind of looking at to see who that was. Um, I think we need more people that are willing to be able to say, hey, I'm not super worried about this idea. I can just go out and do it. Um, like for, for this recording right now, I... Uh, uh, the the take you're listening to is my second take. My first take, I, as soon as I said hello, it was like cough, cough, cough. Oh, crap. <laughs> so, you know, you get what you pay for. And for me, I'm just, I'm, I'm selling this for nothing because I'm having fun and I'm learning. So we're learning a lot and digging into people's bio biographies is helping me understand why do these people think the way that they do um for for these people it's like if uh, when we when we talk about uh, say uh epi epictetus epictetus here so epi as i as i've been practicing epictetus was a slave and then was able to free himself he was disabled so these things influence his life's perspective and his way of thinking and i think that if if we're looking to these figures it kind of goes from like a um the way that i look at philosophy is that people will say whatever they want and you can listen to whatever you want but it, it, the speaker is an, an active participant in that. It's not like, uh, even for this, like this is my interpretation of all of this material. And when I was reading over some stuff on Diogenes, what I found was that this, this book I found, um, it, was showing, it was showing like three different versions of the same information. And that was because three different writers had written three different versions of the same text so three different writers had interpreted say um the key example i think it was that turned diogenes at least according to this editor if you will 
this editor compiling quotes um, was the idea that um, Diogenes went to uh, Corinth and was weighing outside of like a party or something like that. And so he was he was just getting by on food scraps. I think it was like bread scraps or something like that. And then he found a mouse eating away at some of his scraps and he realized that for him, he was desiring to be part of the feast. But then he noticed that he was giving this mouse a feast. And so these three interpretations of that same scene were like moments of him being able to realize that he actually had an abundance of food. He was just looking at it from a, a perspective that wasn't helpful for him. And so these three interpretations were all using pretty much the same language, same words, but three different writers. And that, I believe, is why it's important to keep on looking at, at philosophy from different perspectives and not just saying, oh, yeah, I know what this is because I, I read it once. <laughs> it's like uh, got to read it for a long time, if you will, to really understand it um, because a lot of these, you know, they're, these people will... Uh, they have experiences that influence their thinking. And so when Diogenes was able to set up shop, if you will, then he he had his life experience influence how he thought and then what he expressed, same with Epi, same with every other philosopher here, every other thinker and everyone else even today, like even me, even you, whoever. Um, these sorts of things are deeply influential, and so that's why we need to know some of this information to figure out, is say, say one of these people had committed a murder, then that would be a major theme throughout the rest of their life, would be figuring out what that meant, either for bad justifying that or for good trying to redeem that the person in that sense of saying hey if if this has happened then this is what the person will do to fix that for others you can't undo that that uh, damage but then you can you can fix other damage to prevent others from doing similar actions that sort of a thing and that's why i think it's important to to dig into these people especially the the people that it's like when we learned last time and in, in the part in your part five when we learned about early stoa figures we learned about how there were people that took what zeno, zeno or zenon did and then applied various um other ideas to it uh specifically um when it came to uh cleanthes and then with uh, Heripsis, that uh, both of these folks applied, took the idea of Stoicism that was mainly theoretical, mainly uh, speaking about uh, um, philosophies of deep. And then what both of these students of Zeno did in their own ways was apply different frameworks to that of math, science, and all that to then make the system of Stoa, Stoicism, a much more of a grounded system. And then through that, through that understanding of these thinkers and, and why they were doing the things that they were doing, their motivators, um, I can now understand a bit more about Epicurism or Epicorism. So uh, Epi, Epicorus here made a somewhat rivaling philosophy um, so I can make a note here about what that was uh, Epicureanism favored decreasing personal pain and increasing personal pleasure whereas Stoic Stoicism favors decreasing 
immediate reactions to both. So if I feel happy or sad, if I'm practicing stoicism, then the happiness is still there. It's not silence, it's not deleted. The, the happiness is, is measured in, in more of a calculating way so that way I know oh is this is this a responsible happiness or is it an irresponsible happiness and I think that knowing that for me is very helpful because when let's say that I'm doing these uploads and let's say one of them gets a lot of views it's like whoa you know people like this if I if I then shift gears to become a philosophy um, person that could be good but I also do a lot of other things as well this is not a self promo this is more of a realization of of perspectives that if if I if I go all in into something because one video has an algorithmic positive well how soon will that become a negative how soon will that algorithm die out so I think that's why it's very important to not chase after clout and chase after the positives as well as the negatives that we all kind of don't want to go into chasing like oh my my this hurts or that hurts my uh, my feelings are hurt or my my condition is hurt uh, so we we instinctively know not to go after the negative feelings physical mental and otherwise but we we don't practice enough of the opposite at least from the stoic perspective where we might get you know let's say let's say i get this video this video gets a lot of views well that'd be cool and i'd be happy about that but i'm not going to like uh quit doing everything else i've ever done and then focus solely on this um, unless that is what I feel like is the best option for me and everyone. If I feel that, you know, like, let's say this becomes very popular and a lot of people like it, then yeah, I can do, I can do more, but it doesn't mean I'm going to interrupt my life <laughs> to do all of this. Um, I'm doing this to learn and if I can grow, then great, um, but I'm not going to do this, uh, <laughs> For what? For, for money. Um, I can get money. You know, I do. It, it is good to get money. It's not like I'm, uh, like if I were to get money from any of this, that'd be that'd be cool. But it has to be on my terms. It's not just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get money, and I'm going to get it through whatever means. Oh, I need to make sure that these uh, don't have the accidental uh, link in there. So I'm pasting all this in. So if I were to get, you know, let's say I were to get money from doing all these recordings, then that'd be cool. But I, I don't want to get into like the, into the compromising of self idea when it comes to all of that. So it would be complicated. But until then, I do this for myself. I do it for free. And it, this is all transformative by way of... Uh, transforming the literature as I find it in order to get to the point where we are now in uh, part six prep five um, and I know that we've done a lot of uh, tangenting to get to this point but I feel like somewhat is necessary to build up that context to where we are now when it comes to that mid stoa um, as I say, I'm critical. I dislike this uh, this article, but I do like the the pretty graph, um, and I do like some of the information is pretty good. Um, but it just it's it it needs a it needs an editor desperately, <laughs> especially if you do a, a web search and that's the first article you find. It's like you're going to be like, what the hell is this? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, let me go ahead and do this here as well. Um, we'll uh, do the same bit as we did last time, where I'll paste in the link. Uh, before I say the word, I'll practice it out a few times, or not the word, uh, the, the name. 
and we'll just kind of go from there. We'll see if I can get it. Um, so I'll paste in the link or the, the word here, the name I should say, sorry. Um, all right, so we have, um, that is uh, Ponton, Patain, uh, Pan, Pane, Panatius. Is it Panatius? Pa, Pane, T. Us. Panatia sounds about right to me. Flows well. If it if it flows decently well, then it's probably close. Um, using the the pronunciation guide that I've I've tried to accumulate by way of uh, using the accented mark to figure out what vowel is the priority. So Panatius. Um, what of Rhodes was an ancient philosopher. He was a pupil of. The other Diogenes, not the Diogenes, uh, the Cynic. Um, so from what I've seen, I've seen this name pop up a lot. The name means something like uh, Dio. Um, what is it? Let's see if we can find it here. Um, because it was, it was something like um, the... Something related to Dio or God and something related to like the the son of or the child of. So I think I think that might be part or most of why this name was so popular, but you know, what are um, I can't find it too much offhand here, so um he was a pupil of so we have uh let's go back over to the Oh, the Stoicism one was over here. <laughs> I was watching a video of uh, a well-rehearsed um, slideshow-style video that was made a while ago, like eight years ago. Um, that doesn't happen here, so I bet I bet it's disappointing to see all this. So we have these folks as well, so we might as well start with them, considering how much of this is... Uh, if we go from scratch, if we go from, uh, we took a look at, at these two folks. Um, so if we go start here, then that would be somewhat confusing. So let's go ahead and see. Yeah, so we have we have Rufus. Um, where is that? Seneca. If we go off of the birth chart, kind of stuff like this then Seneca Rufus Epi and Aurelius Aurelius um, were the main ones there let's go ahead and just double check here um, we have the right um, right where are you Yeah, so I think what happened was we have Rufus, we have Epi, and Aurelius. So Seneca might be more part of the late, late Stoa. But I think what happened was that this, this was slightly out of order, or maybe Rufus was more influential than Seneca at first. Um, but I'll go ahead and just uh, move these around a bit. And then final check to make sure that these orderings are correct. Yeah, so Seneca on the left. We have Rufus, Epi, and Aurelius. So I think this this one, the middle stow, is more for like the uh, similarly to the two folks that were after Zeno. That these two folks, uh, no, these these two folks here, were ones that were building on the blocks set by Zeno. Similarly here, where we have Diogenes of Babylon. That was a Stoic philosopher. So this one, 
I'm not going to probably, if, if there aren't a whole lot of works that are, are around, then um, depending on the situation, I probably won't, I'm not going to read a whole lot. I'm not going to look into too much detail, but I will kind of glance through. So, so this Diogenes, Diogenes was um, a pupil of, from, is it Zeno? Ah, okay, so different Zeno. Um, but Hierapsis here was the teacher of this Diogenes. And then we have the other folks that will go into the, did we go over? We went over anti Antipater before. And as an addendum note, I was looking over the details of the last bit here. And so apparently this is like a calling out in a good way to be like, hey, we should be more aware of this. But because I've already covered Antipater before, um, or Antipater, then away you go. Ha ha. So, yeah, we have all this. Um, we're just breezing right along here. So Cicero here was probably not a cynic, uh, cynic or stoic at all because um, the name doesn't come up too often around here. We'll take a quick gander. So just a little bit, as in like uh, teachers of folks and all that kind of stuff, but <clears throat> but not like a big, big old figure within all of this. So yeah, let's see. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rely on some folks to say that they're important, but then their importance within the greater context, within like bringing them up on like a podcast, right? So that this would be like a, a idiot's playing a video game and I'm watching essentially. So this isn't going to be a, a deep philosophical conversation that will be like a broadcast. I mean, like if it's broadcast to a lot of people, cool, but it's not like it's firmly rooted in the idea that we're we're practitioners we're we're students but we're not experts or masters otherwise we would be on a stage um but that stage is covered up by this quote here ha 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 i, th I thought everything uh, where is that quote this one here were it not for that and this poster here we would be on a stage or 18 the uh, the speeches and our interpretations, but we're just we're just two people having a chat. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like um, he wrote many works, but none of his surviving writings survived except by quotations. So um, that's about all we'll do on that note. Um, so we have uh, uh, Pentanius. Patanius. See, that's why I was like, hey, you gotta, you gotta try it many times. Patanius here. Okay, so we go from, we go from Zeno to the two, um, the two people after Zeno, then Antipater, and then we have. Pen. Uh, Penaetius, Penaetius, it's tricky. All right, so Penaetius moved to Rome where he did much to introduce Stoic doctrines to the city, thanks to the patronage of this person here. So this, this is probably why, why Penaetius is so, uh, important to stoic history um where with before panatius this was just a greek thing right this is just something that that was uh, very subtle and it took many years 
uh, many philosophers to adapt it from the uh, hardcore bad but cynicism of the cynic or the cynic of Diogenes all the way here where uh, Panatius um, went ahead and uh, taught this to Rome and that's where I I, I I figure earlier, I figured in an earlier uh, recording that when it came to Seneca, the influence of Seneca in particular was that Seneca, along with Aurelius, were both uh, politicians and philosophers. So combining those two, almost like the warrior philosopher, the, the sword and the pen, uh, equals a lot more than just one or the other. So at least in, in these contexts. I mean, uh, if you're splitting your attention half and half, then you might not be as effective. But if it's something like using military strategy based around philosophy, that's been practiced since uh, the first thinkers were thinking about, about doing stuff. So that makes sense to me why Panatius is um, a figure here, whereas the other folks, they may have been important, yeah, but... What were they important for? What did they do? Well, Panatius was the one that uh, spread that to Rome, and Rome was the major cultural force in that era, in that time. So that was the sort of thing where if Panatius had gone, instead of going um, to Rome, went somewhere else, or never lived at all, then Stoicism would not have spread quite maybe the same way. Maybe Maybe that spread would happen by someone else and we'd be using a different name but I think that's why that's why we're focusing on Panatius here all right so with that being said Stoicism became much more let's see so after the death of the patron that brought him over he returned to the Stoic schools in Athens from Rome, which is in Italy. Now let's go take a quick look here. Uh, there might be like a way to see the map kind of thing because when I was talking about going from Athens and Greece to Italy, uh, I offhand am a bit of a rube, so I can't really tell you where exactly these all tie in. Uh, what I will do though is I will do a map version here. so. We'll do that off screen because of the way that uh, Google not sponsored uh, likes to uh, it can very well dox me um, as it did on my sign that I'm not going to show you because ha 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 and I just did a double check here to make sure so I mean it makes sense right like you, you want to zoom into your exact geographic location but in a situation like this I don't want people knowing what city and what state I live in or at least the, 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 like, I don't care, like, the state and the general location, but I don't want people knowing, like, what, what specific, like, say we're over here, and it's like, I don't care if you know I'm from Athens. I just don't want you to know, like, here I'm, I'm at, like, right over here kind of a thing. Like, I don't want you to know, like, I live over here. That would not be really all that great, so... Yeah, so we're looking at Greece, we're looking at Athens. So when Panatius went to Italy, either by boat or otherwise, Panatius went to uh, be going west. So then after, after his patron died, um, as we know by a certain uh, company not sponsored that has picked up the name again, um, Panatius went back to Athens. So there's a few different factors here. What if Panatius went to Turkey? Um, we went, we're talking about um, the, we're talking about these cities before with Diogenes. I'm going to do the searches off screen just in case. Um, that was starting with Sinope. In Turkey and then directions to 
Uh, we went to Corinth in Greece. So that was the look into how how Diogenes moved around and it, you know where where this is this is by car um Diogenes did not have a car otherwise you know maybe he'd be sleeping in his car instead of the jar haha -ha. rhyming but uh yeah that gives an idea of where when he committed his crime of forgery and was exiled from Sinope he went he moved, he moved a ways. He moved, actually, it looks like, to Athens. Like, maybe, let's go take a look here. So, Athens to Corinth. Is this something that someone could walk? So, maybe over the course of a few, like a day or two, then maybe, maybe... You never know, like, these people don't just hang out one part of the world. Um, so, yeah. Um, that all being said, when Panatius returned to, looks like when, when he returned to Athens, and was its last undisputed skull arc, a scholarch was the head of a school in ancient Greece. So what this means was... Huh. Okay, so it, this would be something like the the ruler of the school, the the head of the school. And so this idea is, is where... Um, he must have been the last person uh, about all of that. So maybe after that, the with uh, with this person here, uh, I'm I'm kind of cheating because I think this might be Poseidon. 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 Yes, maybe of Poseidon, so that could be, yeah, of Poseidon, Poseidon, Poseidonius, we'll say. Um, we'll find out later what, what he did. Um, he is most famous for his work On Duties, the principal source used by Cicero in his own work of the same name. So with uh hey see then i go off topic then i forget how to pronounce these words so penatius um i think this is actually fairly fairly well written fairly clear so this would just be getting more into uh what he was doing a little bit um so he was a pupil all around, taught all around, moved to Athens, where he attended lectures, but then hung out with the the two folks that were part of the Stoic movement that we've briefly touched on a bit. Um, although it is often thought he was to chosen by the people of Lindos, I guess we'll say, um, on roads to be the priest, of that location. This is actually an honor bestowed upon his grandfather, who is also called Panatius. So probably through this person in these lectures, he was introduced to these people. Um, both these folks, who is Polly. Uh, okay, so that's why I haven't heard of that. Uh, this person too much here. Um, both of these folks accompanied him. I guess we're talking about uh, this person here. That's why pronouns are tricky and pronouns are unclear and that's why I try to avoid pronouns. Um, 
because of their imprec impreciseness and because of their um, uh, off topicness. Um, yeah. So these folks headed to the principal monarchs and uh, were doing other stuff. He returned to Rome, where he much introduced Stoic doctrines and Greek philosophy. Maybe we have uh, Panatius to thank for the overlap, the somewhat confusing but, but somewhat cool overlap between Greek and Roman culture, where uh, it's like, what? <laughs> Uh, so we have these folks as well. I'm just breezing along. He denied Greek citizenship, so apparently he just stayed in uh, in Rome, but died in Athens. All right. Um, so philosophy with Panatius. Uh, I dislike this. Um, th this happens sometimes. This is like there should be a comma here, but then it's like um, beginning with Panatius. It would be something like because um, I understand the the intonation. I understand like I've seen this a lot within um, more traditional literature, so that's why I'll, I'll go ahead and check the source here. So this is a grammatical style, very similar to my often despised uh, when we look at, instead of saying this work by, you know, let's say, um, oh, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a modern writer. So like something like Stephen King, right? So instead of saying when we look at the writing of Stephen King, Instead, people will say, oh, when we look at King, it's like, I used I used Stephen King intentionally because of how confusing that can be, where it's like, King is a very ubiquitous word that is not at all a clarifying, but I, people will do that with stuff like this. So um, I'll rephrase this by saying, uh, Stoic theory began... Uh, what was it? Uh, I'll just rewrite this by saying uh, Stoke theory became eclectic thanks to Panatius. I'm just going to skip on through that. So he he worked in physics. And he did some other things as well. I don't know, folks. I don't know, philosophy folks. A lot of what you're doing is you're... you're uh, like this paragraph, the reason why I'm, I'm not happy with this paragraph and maybe why I, I've been hesitant with approaching some philosophy in general is that it's like... Okay, so so you're like... It, it's like this. I need to draw a picture for this. So you're like A, but not B. Okay, cool. So then we have we have C, that's like B, but D. Okay, cool. We can start to memorize that. Then we have E, which is like B but not D. It's like, why don't we use language that actually makes sense to talk about what these people think uh, rather than say like, it kind of like get all these big esoteric concepts that might mean things to certain people. Why don't we just say that A thought A through Z and then B thought A through Z, C thought A through Z, D thought A through Z, and E thought A through Z. So we just go down the list and we say, like, 
hey, you know, this person had no comments on all this. Um, when it gets into all this comparative stuff, it gets really confusing um, because unless you know all of this stuff thoroughly, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is my rube aspect of philosophy. This is why I'm not uh, why I'm not a genius. Uh, I'm also looking to make sure that I have rube uh, the definition correctly. Yeah, I'm a country bumpkin. So Petanius attempted to bring the ultimate goal of life closer to natural impulses and to show by similes the inseparability of the virtues. So there was a critic. He responded to that criticism. He further responded to that criticism. And he further rejected things. So, yeah. I suppose some of this is necessary, but I don't know. It's this is perfectly fine to talk about biography and then uh, the specific context of information. We can kind of get a bit into it, but otherwise it gets frustrating. Um, it, it might be fun. I, I actually, although I get frustrated, it's actually kind of amusing for me to get frustrated like that. It's kind of like oh, I can't believe it. <sighs> so I don't hate it that much. So of the principal works, On Duties was the biggest of, of his literature. Uh, in this, he proposed to investigate first what was moral or immoral, then what was useful or not useful, and lastly, how, to, uh, how the apparent conflict between the moral and the useful was to be decided. For as a Stoic, he could only regard this conflict as apparent not real. The third engage investigation he had expressly promised at the end of the third book, but had not carried out. So this is where Poseidonus was the pupil. So that's how these tie together. Um, yeah, this is all just going to be... Uh, Big world salad. Generally speaking, Petanius, following Aristotle, Xenocrates, and then we have uh, Theopratus. Oh, these words are tricky. And especially Plato had softened down the severity of the earlier Stoics and without giving up their fundamental definitions, had modified them so as to be capable of being applied to the conduct of life and clothed them with... Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense then about how... It, because you have, to, you have to think on these kind of terms where uh, you have... You have folks like... Uh, let's let's use the uh, the right letter here. So when we talk about uh, Diogenes, Diogenes starts with the delta symbol. So the the delta. So we have the spectrum, right? We have the spectrum of of normie to not normie. So norm. Then we'll just say x. So uh, we have on the normie side, we have folks like Petanius here. Uh, let's make sure. Penatius, sorry. I guess uh, my yeah, my brain makes this stuff up. So, Pata yeah, Penatius. So Penatius here is is one of these like. Big old, big old normies. Uh, we'll use the right letter for him as well. So, Petanius here. Big old normie. Oh, you know, like a like a, a cynic philo philosopher apologist over here. Then we have uh, Diogenes over here. That's just like, 
fuck y'all, I'm being over here, kind of a thing. Um, even, you know, this would be kind of a fun, fun kind of chart here to do. Um, so we have Antisthenes, who wasn't quite as a hardcore bad butt as uh, Dio here. So what we'll do is we'll draw a A symbol over here. Uh, Diogenes had Cronus as a student. So let's copy this over, put it into our our list here, because I think we're done with uh, with this norm mixing here. Okay, so we have, uh, I believe that is uh, Cronus. Let's go ahead and jump over to Google Translate. Yeah, Cronus here, so with a K. Uh, no, actually, that's the wrong one. Um, here we go. Right one. Yeah. Cronus here with a K. Uh, there's our our chart for later. So Cronus was more of a... Less of a... I'll go Normie here. So Cronus was the one that taught uh, Zeno. So I'll go back over here. And we'll go to Zeno. Zeno had the Z in there. So let's go with Z. Uh, actually, yeah, because these folks are all part of the cynic movement here of sorts, like kind of half and half kind of a thing. So we'll, let's do like one of these. So this will be our stoic. And then this will be Zenon here. So Zenon here introduced, um, it was with his his pupils. Um, let's see, so that was uh, Cleanthes. So Cleanthes here is with a K. So Cleanthes and uh, the other person whose name I'm going to look up before I remember, because uh, who boy, I've been uh, <laughs> I've been reading a lot of stuff over the past few days. My brain's been been going through it. So we have these folks as like the the pivotal figures within Stoicism, and then from there we have these folks here like Dio and Auntie that maybe don't really have much of a they've they've done some things right they've done some work for the normiedom of the the school of thought that is stoicism um, so what we'll do is we'll put in um, yeah we'll go like this and then what we'll do is we'll kind of have a bring these in so I think that if you if you speak directly to um, directly to uh, Diogenes Diogenes and you're um, you're around him, then I mean I love the guy. Don't get me wrong, but he wasn't a normie at all. Um, so yeah, um, we have these folks here. So what we'll do is we'll put A and D. So these folks are like your kind of widening things. And then we have, uh, yeah, we, we included, uh, we included this as well. So Crotus was the, uh, Cronus was involved with the cynics here so yeah we're we're almost up to speed here we have the all these folks Zeno, Cleanthes, Huripsis, Huripe, so yeah Huripus, right? Hure. I think there was a bit of a guide somewhere around here where was that 
Let's go over here. I saw a guide where it was like Hugh, Hugh Ripe, Hugh, Hugh Rye, Hugh Ripe, Hugh Rye Sip. We're getting we're getting too deep into it. We're getting we're we're losing the normies here. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. I bet I bet we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go like, so we have the the normie, and then we're gonna go back over a ways. And we're gonna be like, because uh, the way that I've been looking at, uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe it could be further normie dumb. Maybe, maybe uh, Patanius here. Panatius, sorry, Panatius is going like. Maybe we think. Or I think that maybe maybe he's over here just being like, ah, I'm sorry about all these folks here. I'm sorry about all of them. Uh, they're, I know that they're bad people, but don't worry. Here's some good stuff about them. Maybe maybe he's just like right around here, and I just don't know it. Um, <laughs> so let's go, let's go do a little bit of cleaning up here because I think this will be the fun. Um, the visual here. So why don't I just go ahead and do that over here. I'll redraw this and we'll just kind of have uh, a little bit of fun here with it. So uh, what we'll do is this is with this and then we'll have this is in 72. Come on. All right. Thank you. Zombie papers. Interpretations of all of this. Dot, dot, dot. I was looking up today about my uh, how my name might re render in Greek, and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, my my friend from way back in in the Rate Your Music uh, days, uh, way back in like 2009, um, helped me out a little bit, and he's like. Oh uh, yeah, zombie paper doesn't look good in Greek. I was like, oh, thank you though. Um. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and do some uh, charting here. But uh, then I took his, uh, I took his translation, modified it a little bit, and uh, I'm happy with it. So we'll go from there. So we have. Let's kind of do roughly a chart like this, right? So we have, then we'll do in smaller font typeface, I should say. We have Cynix. I uh, will make that bigger so you can read it. Yeah, we'll do like that. And I'll move this down a bit. Like so. Yeah, there we go. And one, 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 a little bit. Give us some more room. And so we'll have cynics. And so far we have we have the folks starting with. Um, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start this off with. I'm gonna see if we have Socrates here. Socrates. And throw Socrates in here is kind of like a, because you know that Socrates is our our reactionary person here. So we gotta we gotta do like that. So we gotta do like something like this. Uh, maybe yeah, let's do this. And so uh, put in. I actually have to try here with this. So. Uh, then we have Socrates here is kind of like the anti. So let's go over here. As the anti cynic of sorts in our in our uh, 
figure of of uh, history, Socrates, and we'll we'll uh, we'll leave uh, we'll leave Plato along alone for today. Uh, we won't we won't bug him too much or anything like that. So we'll just focus the ire on Socrates alone, because then we have um, we have one of these <clears throat> going like that. And what we do is we go from here and we say that these folks here, we have Diogenes, di, di, yeah, Diogenes, I should say, sorry, uh, let me cough here. So when we have Diogenes there, um, yeah, let's do something a little bit different. Um, what we'll do is we'll do the anti-Socrates, Socrates, Socrates, if you will. So we'll invert this. Um, now what we'll do is we'll do a, do like a. Oops, that's going to be a circle like that yeah like that and then what we'll do is we'll have uh, going back over here like this and then so these are the cynics these are our main folks that are not happy with Socrates in various ways that um, as in, as we found out in previous uh, videos, um, Diogenes uh, was actually a heckler of Socrates, so that was one thing that I thought was uh, fairly amusing. Um, uh, as someone myself, um, I've really only heckled one one band once because I thought it was kind of funny. Um, everyone else was heckling them as well. Um, and I've, I've mentioned this before, so. I'm not going to repeat myself too much outside of just saying that, uh, you know, it was it was just a situation. Uh, they were okay. They were fine. The band was popular enough to where we didn't hurt their poor will feelings too much there. So it was fine. So then we have the Stoics. Um, actually, let's uh, let's cut that out. Um, because I think what I want to do is we want to have like normie ism and stoic stoicism here. So there isn't really like you know we have of course we have uh, Panatius here, but we'll find out from there. So we have Zenon here. I'll just say Zenon with his two pupils directly uh, building the foundation of what we know today to be Greek. And we'll go do a little squiggly X here for, uh, maybe we'll do like something like that. Um, then we have these folks as well, very similarly inspired. So this direct school will say, um, it wasn't a, a it was a Delta for the I was trying to think of how I wanted to redo this bit. Because as much as I like having this big Z, it doesn't really seem to fit too much. So we'll do something like this. And we'll go like that, and we'll say from here that was who ripe, who ripe sis. We have the other Dio. Then we have the Antipater here. And then we have this dude over here. So that's kind of our our start to where we are. Um, so this is a good way to, to look at how 
how all these folks kind of have a, a direct correlation. If you only focus on the stoicism, then you don't really know their reaction to this. You don't know like how how this all formed by, as I've kind of said before, that uh, Socrates, Plato, and I imagine Aristotle to a certain degree were all philosophers that wanted indulgence, which I think is why, as we looked over at that one, at, at the chorus uh, philosopher that, these were folks that that were like anti that um so let's go over here we have where are you here yeah this is anti e you might say but i think it's actually kind of a little bit like it, it's a rivalry made after the fact I don't think that they hate each other too much, but it's, they're opposing philosophies, um, and that's in a. It's it's almost like you have one philosophy advocating for the idea that uh, live with as much indulgence as you want and have as much fun as you want and limit as much uh, experiences of pain as you can, um, and then stoicism. Uh, the opposite of Epicurism in this particular context is accepting all of that. Um, but they're not really opposites, and it's not really like a, a yin yang situation uh, either. They're just different ways of looking at. I think ideally both would want a reduction of pain, but one is uh, trying to remove all sensation, perhaps, and the other is accepting the sensations kind of a thing. So that's my interpretation of all that. I know, a little, a little confusing, but uh, that's what you get around here. Haha. <laughs> so what is next here is uh, I will be looking next at the, I suppose, our final person in this, um, in this whole listing. Um, because we've we've made a lot of progress, and I think we'll be using this chart going forward here too. Um, maybe like redrawing it as I go. Um, but where are we? So we're over here, um, and we've arrived at not there just yet. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So the middle stoa. No complete work survived from the first two phases, or Stoas. Only Roman texts from the late Stoa survive. Stoicism has become popular. Oh, right, right, right. So, so now we finally arrive at this, uh, this fine individual here. Um, Perhaps I will later regret that, but ha ha ha. Um, so Poseidonius here. Poseid, let's see, I probably need to add that into the, uh, the listing here. Yeah, I do. So we have this, cut out that. Uh, we have uh, Dio, Dio Yanez, Dio Yanez. Um, in my charts, yeah, we featured. So is that, okay, I skipped Diogenes last time and featured Antipater down here. I featured a little bit uh, of both, but now we've, now we've kind of looked at our kind of chart there. So uh, we'll throw, yeah, last time I didn't go with the full pronunciation because I'd already done that above. Okay, so now, now I'm caught up here. So let's go ahead and do this here. And what I'll do here is I'll copy and paste off screen to the on screenness. And we have. Apply this to save it. So po psi 
do ni us Poseidonius there we go Poseidonius here was a polymath a politician astronomer astrologer and I like that they put a citation there Uh, up until, as as Bella Beluga and myself have talked at length over our podcasts, it was only until recently that the two of of astronomy and astrology were separated. And in in my opinion, and this is Bella uh, educating me, but also from my own perspective, the idea that oh, the cosmos is pure of any religion and in any all kind of perspective and all this and so we have to remove as much of that as possible we have to to bleach all of that whereas astrology fits in from the get-go they're they're the two two sides of the same coin if you if you don't if you don't look at the other side of the coin then are you really looking to make sure that you have the right coin um kind of an idea so Poseidonius here was considered the most learned man of his time and possibly the entire school. What a smart old person there. After a period learning Stoic philosophy from uh, our buddy Panatius, he spent many years in travel and scientific research in many different areas. That's really cool. Uh, He studies a teacher where he did where his fame attracted numerous scholars. Next to Panatius, um, he did most by writing. Who we? That that is a sentence. That is that. Those are words. Yeah. Panatius did the most to spread Stoicism. Next to Panatius. And he became well known, including we have uh, some other folks here, including our uh, this person here. So uh, his works are now lost, but they proved a mine of information to later writers. Um, later from him, earlier to us, the titles and subjects of more than 20 of them are known in common with other Stoics of the Middle Period, the Middle Stoa. He displayed this word we'll look it up off screen here uh characterized by different a combination of different forms syncretic so syncretic here looks like there's a uh there is an article here um i wouldn't have to censor out the um you know to be to be safe um the image so we'll uh we'll we'll play a little safe here today we'll we won't have any kind of silly censoring needed um but what i can do is i can show a little bit of this so and just as a little tease you get you get the whole thing over there because i imagine that this has uh Something that I would need to censor up otherwise. Um, actually, I don't think so. But you know, you never know. Um, you gotta be. You just gotta be careful on these sorts of things. Um, so, who is who's the dog though? <laughs> I'm like, I don't care about the people. That are actually clothed, so it'd be fine. But who's the dog? <laughs> Is that Cerberus? <laughs> Anyways, um, or anyway, it's like there are multiple ways. So whichever way you go, anyway, um, the combination of different beliefs, uh, and and all that kind of stuff. So I suppose that's why you have you have gods in uh, 
Greek and Egyptian and Greek and yeah Egyptian so these are that statue is an example that those three statues are examples of a combination of two different um, religions I suppose um, but yeah we have uh, over here um, So it sounds like he he was not as big of a an adversary to to Socrates and Plato as uh, the cynics. So he might be one of our uh, kind of normies as well. Um, and if so, then that gives some kind of scope. I'm just gonna breeze along through. I've been having problems with uh, looking at people's uh, bios before. I do want to focus on astrology, though. Um, I I'm going to have to look for the the materials. Uh, um, I don't think that there might be enough. Um, maybe we'll just do a quick breeze through the Hellenistic religions to see what kind of astrological similarities there are. Maybe we'll just paste it on at the end, um, so you can nope out if you're done with that. But uh, otherwise, uh, you know, we'll take a quick look here. So some fragments of his writing on astronomy survive through treaties of other from other folks um, who appear to have just plagiarized. Um, so, yeah, I suppose if you're digging into astronomy, or ast astronomy is like the studying of the stars, then you would be studying the stars from the astronomical uh, astrology perspective along with the astronomy perspective. So, yeah, let's see here. Okay, so so he did a lot of mathematics, um, and I'm not sure what to make of all that. So we're not gonna. Uh, we're not going to read into that too much more. Um, could be okay, could be not okay, but um, as I've been kind of trying to focus myself on, let's focus on uh, what is actually um, related to the topic and uh, as a kind of personal belief of mine, um, there are many people that do good and bad things. Uh, for example, we have uh, we have Antisthenes here, uh, who taught Diogenes, who was a forger that committed a crime against Sinope, or Sinope, that was so uh, so aggressive against the people of Sinope that he had to be exiled for the rest of his life. He could not return to that city. So that is a criminal in that context, yeah. Um, but then... He was able to live a life that uh, redeemed himself and redeemed and helped change philosophy in many regards um, through through his own perspective on life. So do we respect the crime? No. Do we respect the criminal for doing whatever that maybe is uh, uh, helpful? Uh, yeah, let's, you know, let, let's just uh, kind of go with the idea that... Uh, Diogenes reformed, became uh, not such a bad but criminal, uh, because, I mean, just as proof of all that, right? Um, yeah, so, uh, if if Diogenes had also been a criminal in where he moved to nearby uh, Athens and Corinth, wouldn't he have been exiled there too? Um, someone had to have found out Hey, you remember that guy that that did all that? Hey, uh, I see him over there. So it, I mean, like <laughs> the the stuff. Like he isn't like he didn't disappear. He didn't go like move to a different planet or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I just say something like that. I just say like, all right, you know, you have uh, <laughs> you have these varying degrees, right? So uh, I'm going to rank. This this uh, uh, pi symbol, p symbol, 
uh, for Panatius as a normie, as an extreme normie who who is an apologist. So talk about like no normie dumb central there. So we'll put lowercase a and we'll do one of these squiggles. So versus we have Poseidonius. Is that how I got the name? Yeah, Poseidonius. We go like dough. And uh, Poseidonius has a has a circle here as an O, as a more of a, a normie there, or less of a normie. So, yeah, then we have also two. We have Diogenes, and then we'll put a B over here, uh, a beta, if you will. So we'll put B over here. And yeah, so we'll save this. Um, I don't know where to rank all these folks here because that will be later on in our late Stoa, including uh, Seneca, Rufus, Epi, and Aurelius here. So, so far, I think that's a pretty good series here. I think this is kind of a a good way to go. Um, what I'll do here, so I think I'll just go ahead and uh, I'm getting the sun in my eyes and uh, I feel like this is a good stopping point. Um, oh no, we're going to look at astrology a little bit. That's right. So let's go ahead and do that here next after I do all of this here. So we have Seneca, Rufus, Epi, and Aurelius here, Aurelius. So we'll dig in a little bit more. We've done so already for a few of these folks. Um, I would almost go ahead and start to do a little bit like this. So I think, I think I can go ahead and put these folks in. Um, short of, uh, so we have Seneca we have Ruf Rufus and we have Aurelius. Um, so let me go ahead and um, reposition here. So we have uh, Epi. So Epi, Epictetus, Epictetus. Uh, I'll go ahead and put in. Moving you over a little bit. And we're going to put you over here, Epic. Epi. Um, then next, we're going to go with uh, Aurelius here. So um, what we'll do is we'll just kind of check the sizings. That's all feeling pretty good. Um, you know, you should probably have them the same size, but whatever, right? Um, this isn't going to spell out a word, but I'll confirm it anyway. It's just for fun um, because I've positioned myself at a different angle so I can uh, not have the the sun in my eyes for a little bit. I'll have to change it later, but uh, uh, we'll move over just kind of like just for placement's sake. So Seneca, I think... I think was a lot. Um, some of some of Seneca's writings was very much uh, not normy, um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, we have Aurelius here. Uh, yeah, Aurelius. When I read Meditations, that was kind of like normy core stuff. That was like, you know, all right, buddy. I kind of get what you mean. Um, you're not really uh, speaking anything that's too outrageously uh, creative. But, of course, Aurelius hadn't really planned for um, his writings to get out onto mass population kind of a thing. So, can we really blame him? Um, so, if we are going at this pace, I might even just knock out the last little bit with uh, Rufus for the moment. So, I can uh, 
go ahead and put Rufus on the list. Uh, maybe we'll cover him again in the next one. Um, but I don't know. I feel like we've done pretty good research on everyone else here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just uh, trying to get the uh, uh, the, slime, the blinds closed. So I have to move my headset for a second. Be right back. All right, I thought I'd be able to reach, but uh, alas, alas, it was not to be the case. Um, yeah, I figure I might as well just uh, get this whole list done here. Okay, Rufus here. We'll we'll combine the middle and late stoas, and we'll just kind of go from there. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just uh, close out of this, close out of that. Okay, so we have, uh, I'm not going to guess that offhand. So let's see, we have, uh, um, is this Ruf Rufus? Is this Rufus? Um, we'll find out here, tech language. Okay, so we have Rufos. Rufos, okay. Um, what we'll do, yeah, we'll do middle. Middle, late, stoa figures. Because we've covered pretty much all these folks, so we can just go in and do the last little bit here with uh, with regards to Rufos. Uh, I always heard it as a Rufus, so um, Rufos is the seems like the more correct pronunciation. So we'll uh, we'll go with that. And what we'll do is we'll copy this over. Save it, edit, get the Greek in. So that'd be once more referring to this side over here. We have Ru, Ru. Oh, it'd be uh, Ro, Rofus, because we have the accented uh, ooh sound. Ru. Oh no, it's Ruf, Rufos, Rufos. Ru. Like that. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um, and we'll just go with Rufos there. So we'll. Rufos. That works for me. And so Rufos was a Roman Stoic philosopher that taught philosophy during the reign of Nero and was sent into exile along with all the other um, philosophers at the time. And apparently he did that again. So uh, I'm just going to skip along through some of this here. Stoic opposition. So this might be a good one for next time here, um, because uh, I had not heard about that. So maybe let's just go through son of uh, Roman folks, uh, born in 20 to 30 AD. By the time of Nero, he was famous in Rome, where he start, taught Stoic philosophy. He was associated with the Stoic opposition against the perceived tyranny of Nero. So let's go ahead and see. This is a group of Stoic philosophers who actively oppose the autocratic rule of certain empire emperors, particularly Nero and that person. Uh, most prominent among them was uh, this person who was executed. 
and they were held in high regard by Epic, Titus, and Aurelius. So that, um, let's see. So Rufos had uh, been the student, had been the teacher of these three folks, and all right, yeah. So we have we have uh, these folks. I'm not going to dig too deep into that, but um, there would be some um, look into um, maybe why Stoicism is. Uh, still i don't think controversial in the aspect of like socially controversial within uh politics um i think misunderstood and i think um i think it's something that um this is what happens when language changes over time that um one person summarizes something and then another person summarizes that, and then all of a sudden you play like the telephone game, and all of a sudden, um, when you meant cynic, as in a cynic philosopher that believed in uh, self-reliance, now you have a cynical person that is someone who uh, dislikes your new favorite movie, and so you're mad at that person, kind of a thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So following, following these situations, um, yeah, kind of like the whole political intrigue kind of stuff like that. Um, already sounding not like a normie, right? <laughs> um, so it is perhaps around at this time that this person taught, taught Epic, Epictetus. Um, so that might be the reason for having that, um, how these folks all tie in together, right? So let's let's drop this part out and let's kind of do like the, the thing we've been doing where these folks all kind of interweave together. You have the students being popular um, in regards to the, the teachers and all that kind of stuff. So we'll keep on doing the, the part. Uh, let's go that, do that. Undo that to, to bring those all back. Um, so we'll, we'll dig in, we'll dig in to see how all these folks relate in with Seneca, Seneca Rufus, uh, Rufos, um, Epi, and Aurelius there. Um, because I think that that's worthwhile to know, like, how these folks all tie in together. But, I don't know, we'll see how that works out. Um, we'll, uh, we'll jump on through here a little bit. So, his philosophy, which is in many respects identical with that of his pupil. So, Rufus, Rufos had been the instructor of uh, Epi, who... According to what I've looked out here, yeah, so we have, uh, I, I did this research before, so according to my prior research, I sh should say, we have uh, Rufos, Epi, then Aurelius, and then we have Seneca, Seneca over here, and all that, so cool. Um, is marked by its strong practical tendency. Yeah, so I'm already seeing how these two kind of tie in a lot together um, so the philosophy he would have everyone cultivate is not a mere matter of words of instruction or of the school but one that everyone by their own reflection practice may pursue for himself uh, Heinrich Reiter that we'd uh, learned about before um, was someone that's been a prominent figure in these biographies. So, uh, still he consider, considers it becoming in a philosopher to wear the philosopher's robe, to allow the hair to grow, and to retire from general society. Uh, maybe 
uh, like we're we're kind of doing like live judgments here haha <laughs> of, of of all this uh, at the same time he is convinced he was convinced of the power of philosophy over the minds of people by it the idea he hopes to heal he hoped to heal all the corruption of the mind uh, his philosophy consists entirely of the rules of the conduct of life yeah so we'll skip on through some of this um, and okay so he did he did uh, Uh, I'm not going to look too much at that, so I'm not going to like, I'm not going to dig in too much. But that that kind of concludes with his thoughts on the the world as a whole. So I think overall that's a pretty good summary there. Um, so Aurelius Seneca, Seneca, you know what? What we'll do is we'll have. Um, a lot of these folks kind of like this, and I think, I think actually, when it comes to, uh, let's make sure that the, okay, so we have Ruf, uh, Rufos, I'm just making sure I get the name correct, Rufos <clears throat> is uh, probably on about the same terms as epic but the the normidom is a little bit like this and then what we'll do is we'll do one of these do i because i almost would assume something like that and if so then that feels pretty pretty okay to me Normieism, Stoicism, Cynics. Yeah, let's do that. And then what we'll do is we'll say um, apologists to the Stoics for the Stoics. Being so mean. People are going to look at this and be like, what the hell is going on here? But that's the intrigue, right? Uh, let's go a smaller pen size on that. So maybe I'm given, maybe I'm giving that one a bad rap, but I don't know. That feels all right to me. Um, this isn't like a ranked order list or anything like that, but uh, you can think of it like that if you want. Um, Stoics, people influenced by Stoic philosophies. Um, yeah, we'll we'll cut it off right here. Stoicism, because uh, Rufos. And Epic, Epi, were definitely two Stoics in that sense. So um, this makes them more popular, though, to be not as normy and not as a. Um, how do I want to do this? Um, I'm going to do like that. So we'll do, we'll do something like this. We'll bring this down a bit. We're bringing this back up. And then we'll do one of these. People influenced by Stoicism. Um, and what I'll do is I'll cut and I'll put it like this. Uh, we'll put early, mid, late. I think that's a good way to, to denote that. So, 
early mid late so for uh for Petanius here though pay Penatius I keep on saying saying the name wrong uh credit I do give credit for uh, his spread of stoicism, stoicism, but uh, as far as um, maybe maybe I'm giving him too much of a, a hard time there, but whatever, right? What is he going to do, come after me and beat me up? Uh, good luck with that. Uh, let's go ahead and do the, the curiosity bit, right? So let's go look up to see if this word means anything. Um, so, not, um, this was uh, Seneca, so that one doesn't count, but I don't think there is an S. Um, let's, let's do something else here. Let's go look it up via the Greek alphabet uh, over here. And so what I'll do is I'll copy these over into my clipboard and then I'll paste that in after. So yeah, I'll put a put an S. We have a we have the R symbol, the row. So it's like Rofus then. That's what it is. It's Rofus, not Rufus, it's Rofus. Row. Rofus there. All right. We're, we're practicing. We're learning. I like that the word teaches you how to pronounce the, the how it's pronounced there. Um, so Z. Z for Zeta is not at the end of the alphabet, but up here. Okay. Um, let's just do the last little bit here with the, um, I'll do the first two as well. So that way we can make sure to cut out any kind of, uh, silliness in case there's any kind of bad word. I can catch it before I use it in the thumbnail and then offend, uh, Greek or folks that understand Greek. So Greek speakers or Greek enthusiasts. Um, so, yeah, uh, we have the full name. I think I'm going to not do that live, just in case it says something that's kind of offensive. Okay, so nothing and nothing. Yeah, okay, so nothing, nothing overall there. For this part here, nothing there either, so just as I thought. Um, show for this instead. Did you mean this? No, I did not. So that means nothing, so that's kind of a good thing. Um, I don't want to include that in the overlay. So what I want to do, though is I want to do something like this. Because I'll look over the astrology stuff later. I'll look, maybe I'll watch like a video or two. Have some, uh, uh, get some rest uh, is what I'll be doing. I'll get some rest. I'll watch some videos about astrology. Maybe I'll do a little bit of prep reading. And if I think it's worthwhile, then we'll go ahead and do that. Um, if not, then that is okay, because what I think we'll do is we'll continue along here. And I think that doing like a, a kind of a in-depth perspective there might be good. Um, for the podcast, uh, maybe. I mean, we've already kind of done that. So all this would be doing is just like figuring out how all these people tie together. Um I 
I want to go ahead and be decisive here. So what I'll do is I won't leave it up to chance, and I'll just say that middle and late Stoa. Because we've already done all of this reading. We've looked into Seneca, Ruf, uh, Rofus, Epi, and Aurelius here. So we've already done all of this. So I don't think it's going to be wise to spend, what, another hour and a half, two hours talking about these folks again and seeing how they all tie together. We kind of already know that. Um, all it would be doing is just like connecting the threads together. Um, but this was useful today to know how how the the early folks tie in with the later folks. So this was useful. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you you get this kind of stuff around here if you like it. Um, um, hey, that, that's what I'm all about is doing weird stuff like that to help me figure out stuff. So uh, we'll go ahead and delete this. But thank you for your service there, uh, part there. Uh, so part seven, and like I say, I'll, I'll do a, let's do a quick read over this. Let's see if there's anything that I might consider worthwhile about this. And then if not, then we'll just include that all in the show notes. Um, as in like, um, let's say this is all about like, there's nothing really related to stoicism, let's say. Then, and we only have three references, so this would probably just be more of a show notes type thing. Um, but I think this is good for context, so let's go ahead and close this out by saying uh, the concept of Hellenistic religion covers any of the various systems of beliefs under the ancient Greek culture from the 600 year period. There is much continuity in Hellenistic religion, and then they introduced more gods. The worship of deified rulers became a feature of this period. Um, many people practiced magic, and this too represented a continu continuation from earlier times. Throughout the Hellenistic world, people would consult oracles and use charms and figurines to deter misfortune or to cast spells. As I found out in another series, um, there was a Saturnalia with the Sigillarius. Um, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and uh, pop in a quick look over here by way of oracles. And then we'll have Saturnalia. So with the Saturnalia, this is a, a festival to celebrate the god of Saturn. And then they had Sigillaria, which were like little figurines that were given to folks. The figurines were like uh, um, statues of people and all that kind of stuff. So there was all of that. Um, the complex system of astrology developed in this era seeking to determine a character's a person's character and future in the movements of the sun moon and planets the system of hellenistic philosophy such as stoicism and epicurean so I'm, the name is from epicorus so epicureanism offered a secular alternative to traditional religion even if their impact was largely limited to educated elites. So let's skip down. Let me get some water here. An alternative to traditional religion was offered by Hellenistic philosophy. So what I imagine is that we have the kind of interrelation aspect of, of we have philosophers and religious people. Um, so it's kind of curious looking at the list here. Um, let, me, let me go grab, I wanted to see. Um, oh, 
okay. So I've never really learned about um, this person here. Uh, never, never seen the name before. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe I've heard of of the um, the philosophies and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, a a um, student of Aristotle. So there's that as well. Um, yeah, let's uh, with uh, no, let's do this as like a part six, and this will be part six, um, prep five. Uh, this will be the um, footnote as a prior applied to. Astrology not separate recorded separately because the information is primarily not on Wikipedia, not sponsored. So this makes the most continuous for this series. There we go. Um, then, of course, when I tab it, then it all goes to heck. But uh, we'll just kind of uh, kind of do one of these, I think. Pop up. Oops, uh, like that, and then we'll do one of these. Um. There we go. And we'll do one of these. Two. Oh, we'll, we'll keep it kind of similar like that. Um, and then I'll include in when I receive them. These, these are going to be videos um, because uh, Chris Brennan, I don't know if I've spelled the last name correctly, um, is a astrologer uh, that does podcasts and all that kind of stuff so we have we have this um, and I'll include those in when I receive them I will include though as well the philosophy as a side note and then I'll throw in uh, this person here as well whose name I haven't practiced at all so I'm not going to try to pronounce the name uh, so we'll go back over to the religion side um, and what we'll do is we'll say that um, an alternative to traditional religion was offered by Hellenistic philosophy. One of these philosophies was Stoicism, Stoicism, which taught that life should be lived in accord according to the rational order which the Stoics believed governed the universe. Human beings had to accept their fate as according to divine will. And I think that's the idea of uh, what is inside of your control and outside of your control. And virtuous acts should be performed for their own intrinsic value. Another philosophy was Epicureanism, Epicorism, uh, which taught that the universe was subject to random movements of atoms and life should be lived to achieve psychological contentment and the absence of pain. So want uh, stoicism is that we live in we live by uh, the on the great r river of life and we just try to do what we can uh, to do well in that system maybe is one way to phrase it and then epicureanism is that um, let's try not to everything's random so let's do the best we can maybe there are other philosophies Cynicism is also featured in there too. Uh, let's see what they have to say here. Which express contempt for convention and material possessions. Uh, I think that's probably part of why I'm I'm in in that. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, just look at uh, what are we doing? What are we looking at here? We're looking at um, not that one. 
we're looking at this new one that I made just today. I mean, how much more contemptuous of the idea of uh, being a good artist do I need to get than drawing a sippy cup like this? Or even my, my avatar. I mean, <laughs> I've received ridicule from, pe from people over that avatar. Um, and I, I enjoy it. Honestly, I enjoy that because that's a real quick indicator to see, is this person worth my time or not? Um, and you know, when people tell me that it's not like, oh, you, you, you hate my stuff. So you're, you're big old meanie. But if people are like, I would draw your character, but I want your character to be cooler. It's like, oh, I'm not going to change my character. So you can draw me if you want. That should be cool points for you, huh? So, yeah, um, I can see how this would be a belief system, which is what religions are. You, you believe in atheism. Um, that is still a belief system. Um, instead of believing in, in a religious figure, you believe in uh, human beings, I guess. <laughs> Big mistake. Uh, so we have a cursed tablet. Oh, I thought this was like a cursed tablet. This is like something that uh, was like you own this and you um, something bad happens to you. Like you uh, keep on rolling with a recording for hours and hours and bore everyone. <laughs> um, so yeah, all of these philosophies to a great or less extent sought to accommodate traditional Greek religion, but the philosophers and those who study under them remained a small select group. And we've learned about that a lot, um, about them being the elite kind of a thing. So I think that is a good place for me to stop. So what we'll do in the next one is we'll go ahead and put um, brackets around that so you kind of know like this is, this is part six prep five footnote. Yeah. All right, so then we're going to do part seven prep six. Yeah, prep six will be my my um, rounding out of all of this, I think that will be the good way to conclude all of this, to, to uh, before the podcast, if you will, um, to, uh, to cover all these topics in brief, um, so that way we can say, uh, for tomorrow, for my tomorrow's podcast, you're a few days ago, uh, podcast, uh, to cover all of this, and to say, where does all of this fit together, and... Then from there, I can go ahead after the podcast, I can go in and study the mindfulness perspective that uh, my psychologist had recommended. Um, so that way um, I will reveal my secrets. So my psychologist at my last appointment said that there are no emotional tools other than mindfulness. This was what my psychologist directly told me. Um, as we've seen throughout the series, there are many emotional tools used by many people. The cynics use cynicism as a way to emotionally cope with reality. Uh, the Stoics use emotional tools all the time to assess reality and say, okay, I will not get too excited or lack thereof in regards to um, situations. Um, I will temper my expectations and listen with an open mind to whatever it is that comes my way without judgment. And what I see, what I hear, I will trust in my reaction to that and I will study from there. Um, as I would imagine a stoic perspective. So yeah, I, I feel like that's a good stopping point here. So part seven these may be 
like I might I might take this overlay I might uh, nuke it I might use it um, I mean I built it all so it'd be a shame to get rid of it suddenly but I, I do that frequently I have fun with it and plus um, with that with uh, with the podcast I will uh, remove the talking rock side so I think it, I think it'd be fine to adjust it slightly after the podcast maybe do like uh, something related to the medical side of things um but with that all being said uh, just let's see yeah so it might not work too well but i don't know we'll see with that all being said i have been zombie paper you have been watching and listening to me talk about stoicism um we've covered a lot of ground today over the past few days um my brain is uh, thoroughly um, enjoying this material, um, and I hope you've done the same. Um, if I've gotten anything wrong, um, once more for context, uh, I am not a genius. I am not an expert in philosophy or in the Greek language or in much of anything. So I have probably misinterpreted things. Um, if you feel so inclined, if you feel that it will add and not be destructive, feel free to make comments. If it is destructive, then I'll just delete it. And you, all you've done is uh, expressed your anger and uh, you didn't get your words out there in my forum to uh, express hate, hatred toward me. So haha, I've, I've done it, but then you can always do something else at me and you can, you can complain and do all you want but I won't give you an easy avenue for that because I don't care. Um, uh, with that all being said, once more, I've been Zombie Paper, and I appreciate you for uh, uh, being you, for hanging out, and all that good stuff. So, uh, <laughs> like, what else do I say? Nothing else. All right, bye.